you are not alone. Hey kids, this is what SprintX is telling hundreds of entre entrepreneurs and talented teams that are looking for a way to launch their own business. They have identified these needs of the startups of today to build the industries of tomorrow. SprintX is developing business ideas, plus launching the promotion of their future ICOs, plus listing them on SprintX's own exchange. SprintX is unleashing a new age of support for startups and ICOs, and you can be part of it. ICOs have had legal issues, scams are rampant, and fake projects taint the reputation of legitimate ones. SprintX will filter and verify all startups doing ICOs as legitimate companies that will follow a strict business discipline so they become profitable and successful for all investors. Startups have issues after doing their ICOs to convert their funds uh, since most are done raised in crypto but need to be cashed into fiat afterwards. SprintX will use SwitchX as crypto and fiat exchange. Uh, that will convert and embrace crypto and fiat, conforming to laws and regulations while supporting cryptocurrencies for all of our investors and users. Lastly, SprintX will use Nova as the startup incubator that will accelerate growth for all of the startups they support and build their first ever tech hub for startups in LATAM. This means entrepreneurs from all over the world can come to Nova and develop their companies in a tech hub that will be turned into a real crypto smart city. It's almost like Disneyland for people in crypto and people who are smart and people that want to live in a city. Visit SprintX.io to learn more and sign up now. Tell them Crypto the Wonder Dog sent you. And uh, when you're there, Watch for a little crypto underdogs from roaming the streets um, and uh, scratch one head, they won't bite. Toss them uh, a Bitcoin and uh, they'll go sit, sit under a shade tree and uh, enjoy the afternoon. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's get to the program. Hey kids, Dean from Crypto the Wonder Dog Show. This week I had on Alvaro Fernandez from Fileproof. Also, uh, as a student, he's part of Fudan Blockchain Association. Uh, he is in China, hanging out, uh, stirring it up over there, and he's an advisor uh, to several companies. Uh, young kid, and um, I got a feeling that uh, you're gonna be hearing a lot more from this guy, uh, and especially when it comes to decentralizing um, <clears throat> Especially when it comes to decentralizing uh, the parts of the, of, the, of, the, of the world that need to be decentralized. He was a student uh, there in China. He's from Spain. So this is a conversation I had with my buddy Alvaro here on Crypto the Wonder Dog Show. You guys ready to start the show? All right, let's start the show. So you're in, Ch you're in China right now? It's a little bit tough. First, we have all the regulation, uh, for example, Facebook and all this. Uh, social media is not really easy to talk about. That we are uh, with a uh, talking via a VPN right now. Yeah. But uh, there's always a way to to get around it. So, <laughs> uh, on an overall, you really enjoy China. Initially, I was coming for, for four months for getting to know a little bit about China, Chinese language as an exchange student. And here I am, I got a full-time position at uh, chain, uh, Blockchain Found and uh, looking forward to, to stay here at least midterm. So enjoying life in Shanghai. Wow, so you're, you're still a student. Well, I, I, I finished my, my bachelor. Uh, I was writing my thesis uh, back the last, uh, last semester while I, while I was doing this uh, exchange semester with uh, Chinese learning about uh, Mandarin and so on. Wow. And uh, looking forward to get into some master's uh, degree, but uh, I just got fully into blockchain. I'm quite busy right now. <laughs> That's crazy. So you're, you're learning Mandarin? I mean, I started with it. I was uh, pretty busy with it for four months. Then I said, got into blockchain and I 
managed to get into it, like some uh, I, um, iOS apps and get some Chinese learning, Chinese skills, and so on. But uh, nothing like I was doing back before. Wow. So you you have you, do you have pretty good conversational um, Mandarin then? I would be more to basic level. You can order some food, uh, <laughs> get beers at the bar, and get some random <laughs> the important conversation. Stuff. Yeah, the important stuff. Where's where's <laughs> exactly, the beer? Exactly. Where's the bar? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> Prior, priorities. <laughs> but once you get into into topic related discussions, it's it's pretty tough. I mean, you you've got like around nine thousand characters. Where uh, nine thousand? Three thousand if you want uh, to read a a, a newspaper. But oh still, my God. It's, uh, it's a tough work. I can't. I can't even imagine. Um, uh, and, and how did you end up in China? Where, how, where, where, where are you from? I'm born and raised in Spain. Okay. Uh, went uh, then to to Germany for for my studies. I have a, a dual citizenship. I'm Spanish and German due, due to family, but uh, feeling rather Spanish, I would say. And after a couple of years in Germany, I was uh, actually looking into the financial industry for getting into it and was looking for some interesting uh, city. I was uh, focusing on Hong Kong, Shanghai, Singapore. And I don't know, I just got attracted uh, from the Chinese culture and thought to, to try it out. Really? And definitely I, it was worth it. Yeah. Wow. Totally. What, what part of Spain are you from? Have you ever been in China? No, i never been to China. Um, my, my brother, I have a brother that, uh, he worked for, for a tech company and he was, he would spend a month out of the, out of like every six months he was there for a month, uh, mm. China, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, uh, uh, Vietnam, Korea. I mean, he was all over the, the Asian continents, but, um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, but I've never, he was, he invited me. You gotta come to this part. Yeah. We were supposed to go. He invited me. He's like, yeah, I've got a bunch of miles. Next time I go up there, you know, I'll, I'll bring you and your daughter. And I'm like, awesome. And then, uh, then then his, his, uh, department got let go, his whole department. And so we didn't, I didn't, I didn't didn't get to go. Uh, Nice. But, uh, uh, what part of Spain are you from? I'm from Madrid. Born and raised there. Madrid. And, uh, yes, yes. Not really a full fan, though. If you're gonna ask for Real Madrid, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it's a, it's a nice city to live in. Yeah, a, Spain is a pretty nice country to live in when when you have money. I would say when so, you have money. Yes, but yeah. uh, working conditions and and so on is not really the best. So that's mm. one of the the points that got me out of Spain pretty quickly when I was uh, twenty. And uh, yeah, like looking forward to come back. Uh, I would rather say in the mid to long term. Yeah, maybe even for for retirement. Of course, you miss really? your family and so on. But yeah. uh, if you find a place like Shanghai, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, Did don't you tell look, my mom though. <laughs> have you started a family yet? You got a girl? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, I mean, uh, the relationship market in, in Shanghai is pretty pretty interesting. You can try out almost everything. So um, I'm pretty happy with our girlfriend now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, still in my twenties, so uh, yeah, you got a long time to enjoy. You got a long time, man. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I spent a little bit. Of, I spent uh, a few days in uh, Malaga and um, Marbella. Nice. Um, I got nice. a buddy that's out but, there, and so he invited me to come out and spend a few days with him. That was really nice, man. Go just walking through the old towns. Um, so you saw all the uh, British and Russian uh, tourists getting drunk from 12 a.m. around there. Yeah, yeah, right there on the beach in uh, Mount uh, Marbella. Crazy. It looks it looks like Newport Beach. Um, I don't know if you've been to yeah. California. Yeah, never been there though, but can imagine. Yeah, I mean it was just like Newport Beach, and uh, you know all these boats and Lamborghinis and Ferraris and uh, yachts mm-hmm. and clubs. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, no, no crypto Lambos that, that I knew though. Spain, yeah, this is no uh, really, yeah, crypto community. Yeah, it was way before. Uh, I knew anything about crypto, but uh, <laughs> um, it was yeah, it was really nice and he's a super nice guy. He's actually he's uh, he's from uh, 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 he's Danish, and his family has wow. some gigantic company that does uh, uh, it's called um, Jensen Sensors, and they 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 moved their mm-hmm. their corporation over there to Spain and um, super nice guy, super nice family. So. Um, uh, anyway, back well, the, to you. It's just a nice city to live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He be, beautiful house and everything, so they they, they enjoy it over there. So, um, so back to you. You uh, 
you got into you got into crypto how well first of all i heard about bitcoin and all these bad news you randomly hear on, on the main uh, media sadly uh, there's no uh, usually no good news uh, or at least back <laughs> in 2016 2017 just hear about this crash and that bad news and lack of regulation and some bit connected news and things like that oh yeah but um I would say I got more or less into it in uh, mid 2017, more or less like you, I would say. Yeah. And uh, then turning towards the uh, end 2017, I really got like totally focused on it. Started uh, with an um, event that was organized by the Fudan Blockchain Association. And that's the point where I said like, okay, let's stop the car and say, let's go into crypto. I just uh, got in touch with, uh, with the CEO, with, uh, with the leader of, um, of the Fudan Blockchain Association, Oliver Turquette. And he pretty kindly welcomed me on the association, started organizing events, educational meetups, workshops, everything you could imagine, also internal discussions and analysis, which was uh, really productive, really interesting. And that's when I got fully, fully into it. Started investing, I would say, like back in November, December 2017. Just got some of the green market before all this uh, several month beer market came in in the early 2018. Yeah. And yeah, and then I just got fully into it. Uh, beginning of 2018, I started uh, as a chain founder uh, as an investment analyst. Um, and Chain Founder is basically a venture capital firm which is uh, focusing on investing into blockchain enabled companies. Okay. And really interesting, you got a, a pretty deep overview for, for uh, investment strategies and uh, all these uh, indicators you should uh, uh, take care of in case you're investing. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with the company. Yeah. They're actually part of, uh, of Chain Plus, which uh, is uh, offering several services as well. They're uh, offering uh, incubation uh, acceleration services for several projects uh, from, from Shanghai. And um, yeah, just uh, go with them. Still happy until today. Looking forward for extending my stay here in China with them. And then is when, when the highway came. I just uh, got fully into it. Uh, LinkedIn caring a little bit about it and then just you know all these uh, messages uh, via linkedin and other sources came overwhelming overwhelming and uh, asking you for looking into this project uh, helping out with that one community manager here oh my god and i said <laughs> okay maybe uh, it could be interesting to get uh, advice in some companies yes some some projects and the the first one i started with was uh, inclusivity uh, which is a uh, focus on inclusive business i've been working with them since uh, more than three months and have helped helped them out with uh, several uh, situations and, and issues basically on a strategic uh, advising position like end to end i would say from recruiting to decision making or closing up uh, different partnerships or uh, negotiation with uh, venture capital funds testing a little bit out how, how this experience, how this ex advising experience would be. It was quite interesting, just liked it and say, hey, I still have some spare time on my weekends and could take some time from, from my sleeping time. And said, <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's get into some more, some more projects. And then I came across some, some other projects like uh, gaytheers.com, which is uh, basically content uh, publishing, uh, com content providing uh, platform, totally early stage, uh, not uh, directly uh, blockchain related yet yeah um, i might uh, be disclosing something i shouldn't but uh, anyway let's turn to the <laughs> next one <laughs> and fireproof oh wow fireproof is, is is a project that i came across like around one and a half months ago and it's a pretty interesting uh, protocol i would say for decentralized uh, decentralizing file proofing just got interesting file proofing what's in what is file proofing tell me what, what's file proofing mean? They're decentralizing a uh, proofing protocol for, for files, like from like everything you could imagine from any working files or even getting into um, e-commerce or anything. So they're just uh, enabling the, the protocol for, for this. And um, yeah, you can just uh, authenticate uh, all the digital files and uh, 
you have several layers, several several uh, um, points where you have uh, first the the verification, and then you can uh, as well um, just uh, proof in case you are a third uh, third party and uh, want, for example, to verify that uh, an, an a file is actually true is is actually if it actually veridic so to say and then you could uh, go into into this uh, platform and and for a relatively small amount of of, of their own token you just could um, verify it it's a really early stage we're still into seed investment but uh, we're getting everything ready uh, still recruiting some of our technical uh, staff and uh, just polishing a little bit the whole project for getting it ready for a, for a future ico Okay. But uh, looking forward to it. So you're looking a future ICO. So when, is it, when, do, when do you think that'll happen? It might be like in a couple of months. We'll still have to fix the, the date, but it will be around summer. Around summer, okay. Uh, we, 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 would ra- we would rather focus on uh, having like everything attached, everything like our homework done, we would say, for, for getting a, a proper ICO instead of, you know, all these uh, several ICOs that you can see on the market in the, in the past months that are, just giving you the, the, the feeling that it's some kind of uh, take the money and run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got plenty of those. Yeah, yeah. we do. We, we absolutely do. Um, and so you, uh, you, you, you met Ray Chow Tone, Tun, T O U N? Sorry again. So Ray, Ray Tao, or Ray Chow. Uh, Tone, that's the. Uh, um, yes, he's one of the, the co founders. One of the co founders. Okay. Uh, oh, Yes, yes. Uh, he's uh, really uh, an interesting guy who was uh, managing like large scale international IT projects and, and so on. And uh, he came across with this idea with uh, Frederick, Frederick Baron, okay. uh, entrepreneurial CFO with more than 10, ten years experience. And they, pro- they both approached me, just uh, presented me the project and said, why not? Let's, let's give it a try. Let's help them out. And that was, uh, I'm currently... Uh, focusing on shaping all the token economy, all the token metrics for for the ICO. Still a long way to go, but uh, yeah, getting our work done. Wow! And and uh, you 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 got a, a a nice nice group of founder or uh, advisors around you. You got Aaron Delu, uh, Rene, uh, Claudio, exactly, and Claudio as well. Dr. Walter Tonetto, Bernard Selinger. Yeah, we we got some nice profiles. Like Dr. Tornado is, uh, for example, a VP from the Asian, uh, Asian, sorry, and uh, yeah, he was uh, being professor at several universities like uh, Tokyo, Waseda, and so on. And he's really into cryptocurrency. It's a it's a really interesting profile. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you get to do you get to meet with these guys on a regular basis? Do you talk with them? It's a little complicated, you know. We're spread across the world, so the the only thing we managed to have was some digital meetings, uh, thanks to Skype sessions, several conversations, and uh, think tanks we had. But uh, we're looking forward for getting some some meeting, mostly sure in, in Singapore, where uh, where Frederick is actually based, and some some other guys from the team you can you cannot see on on the web page right now. Oh, Frederick's in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And Ray is in in Switzerland, for example. Oh, Ray's in, in Switzerland. Valley. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow! So you guys are spread all over the world, and and it's it's really cool to have things like uh, Telegram that uh, you can you can just hop on, and I mean we're on Telegram right now, and it sounds like we're you know sitting across town from each other. Totally, so clear. totally. C- Telegram is really active in, into crypto, but. Uh, you have, uh, for example, in China, as, as I'm based here in, in Shanghai, uh, especially developers and uh, technical profiles, um, they don't really like to interact with uh, social platforms like uh, WeChat. WeChat is like the, the WhatsApp here in, in China. It's uh, pretty much regulated. I hope the government is not uh, listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yes, so there are several uh, communities in, in Telegram, and it's, it's really, really inter- interesting to see. Wow, and it, so yeah, I was listening to a podcast yesterday from a, from a couple of guys, and they were they were talking about how regulated it is in China. Um, mm, do you have totally. to do you have to watch out for things? Do you, is there things that that you're that you get um, you know dinged for? You know what what how, how is it regulated? Uh, I don't have any direct uh, friend or something who got like 
just uh, punished from the government or something like that. But uh, you hear some some rumors and and situations where you could uh, you would just rather not uh, mention certain names like uh, Xi Jinping, like uh, the, the the head of government here in China, or just. Uh, Blaming or talking bad about government stuff and wow. several things. So you just gotta be a little careful with it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as long as you're not in, uh, like really important profile within certain industries and uh, capturing all the attention from the from media or from from other sources, yeah, it's not really a major problem. Okay. Be Be Beijing might, might be a little uh, tougher though. It's uh, the po political capital here in China, but uh, Shanghai. I was I was actually amazed how how Western Shanghai is and how how it's 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 even more capitalistic than than several cities uh, back in Europe. I would like definitely for sure like than Madrid or even that than than London. I would say really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You, you, ev everything you you want to do, you could do it in, in Shanghai. Wow, but it's nothing like North oh. Korea, where they're completely cut off from uh, outside <laughs> outside no, uh, news. Think, yeah, that, that's another level. That's another level. <laughs> yeah, um, and and do you do you get any news from uh, from South Korea? I know they they've been kind of quiet, you know, the last few weeks or months or whatever. But uh, you know, for a while they were. They were really causing uh, a, a dust storm. You mean into you mean into crypto or, yeah. or just in general? Yeah, just you know, yeah, well, just they're, in they're the a pretty active community in, in yeah. crypto. They're, they're like there's a vast community in, in crypto and uh, blockchain. Uh, you had some news back in January regarding regulation and so on, which uh, got a lot of thought into people. Yes, but um, still, like the some of the major exchange exchanges come from. From Korea, and you have a very big pool of of investments of so-called whales that want, just want to get into into several investments. And actually, some friends of mine are organizing some some uh, several events as well. But um, just um, getting uh, international projects into into the Korean market, yeah, because it's 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 a big um, there's a big interest. But still, it's a quite close community. So you gotta know the right people from from where, from what I heard, for for getting to to know the the correct investors and the correct people in, into the Korean community. Yeah, um, and and uh, you know, speaking of the, the shows, are are you do you get involved in any of the um, uh, you know the meetups or the meetings or the these uh, big events? What do you mean? Uh, you know, like uh, uh, the 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 big uh, crypto events that happen, you know, all over the world. I mean, do they? I'm sure they have them there in China, right? It's it's as well a little sensible topic. You, you can have this big event. You have a lot of uh, summits going on, especially Shanghai. You you got a big community in Shenzhen as well. Some some big events in Beijing. Too. Yeah, uh, there's a big blockchain community in in, in Beijing. But the thing is. ICOs are forbidden in China. That's the first point. They're forbidden. And you have regulation for for investment for investing from from the Chinese community. Really? The, the Chinese, yeah, the Chinese government is just. Um, yeah, you know, you've seen with with all this uh, ICO investments, people are getting crazy for for investing into it, and that's basically capital which is uh, flowing in as fiat, as uh, renminbi in the in this case, getting converted into into ether or any cryptocurrency. And it's basically flowing out of the country, and the government just doesn't really like that. So wow. they, they got regulated in, into that aspect, but yeah. um, still, the uh, government is pretty pro blockchain. You yeah. have several incentives of some kind of uh, crypto values here here in China for uh, research in institutes into into blockchain. Yeah. I don't remember the the city. You know, like I'm not really good with Chinese, so everything sounds more or less the same. But there is the the incentive. And um, that's basically the how how it's um, approached here in China. You have uh, against ICO but pro blockchain technology, so you can still have a, a pretty big path for for organizing these um, these events okay. or summits or conferences. Yeah. And officially, you are not going to talk about any ICOs and so on. As I'm talking for a U.S. podcast, you, I can tell you, like with networking events and and and, and such situations, you, you you're always uh, capable of of closing deals. So, oh, okay. So it, it's a it's kind of like an underground thing to do the ICOs over there, and 
Exactly. You just gotta be careful. Just be careful. Everyone has its way to <laughs> to you know like get get around all these regulations. Just a little more difficult. But the Chinese community is aggressively for getting into into blockchain and and cryptocurrencies, and they're they're managing to do it. Yeah, it just seems like it, it, it's weird that they don't allow ICO because because uh, you know it's. That, that I mean, that seems like it goes hand in hand with uh, with blockchain. Is you know the first thing you think of is like, well, what ICO mm, is coming mm, out, mm. and um, that's the way that the, these these companies raise their money, right? That's that's their their source of income to begin with is the ICO, right? Exactly, exactly. So actually, let me let me tell you one thing. Like you you, you ever heard about Neo? One of the Neo, the yes. Top ten, yes. Yeah, it's actually based in Shanghai, for example. Okay. So still, like you have that limitations, but the incentive and, and the interest from the community is, is, is totally there. So if, if there's a company that wants to launch, um, how, how do they launch without doing an ICO? It's uh, pretty complicated right now from China. <laughs> so theoretically, it's not possible. In practice, what's happening is that they're being uh, officially located in either Singapore or uh, Gibraltar or Cayman Islands or any crypto-friendly country. So that's how it's uh, actually happen happening several times with with Chinese project. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um... And then uh, what what uh, what's going on with you as, as far as uh, um, you know your 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 next venture? I know you you there's a couple things going on. Uh, are are you still in school? No, I'm currently focusing totally on on uh, investment analysis with with Chain Founder. Okay. Looking forward for I would say like if not next year uh, 2020, I would like to get into some uh, master program, master degree. But, um, you know, as, as it's just like with uh, the Chinese language, with Mandarin, I was uh, at the very beginning fo focusing totally on it. And then I realized the big opportunity I, I got here uh, with blockchain in, in, in Shanghai. And I can always learn Chinese. I can always get into a, a master's degree. But the blockchain and crypto opportunity is now. Yeah, I mean, you can get that. Uh, what, what's that? Um, those online courses, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Was, yeah, yeah, you was, have like MOOCs and several like distance courses, and yeah. I'm actually doing uh, with the University of Nicosia. There's uh, the first uh, digital currency uh, master program. I'm doing some kind of uh, introduction to it, towards it. It's it's interesting for for getting like an overview of it, but I just don't have the time for for getting in and in, into to full time studies right now. Yeah, that you know, I I I have uh, you know so many things going. Even just doing a podcast. Uh, it mm, this takes mm. so much time, uh, you know, because we, we do this, you know, we we do the talk, and then we have to go do the post production, which is putting in all the all the cards and and doing the graphics and uh, doing the intro, yeah. voiceover, yeah. and then and then once you do that, then you got to put it up, and then you got to promote it. <laughs> so there's, yeah, I kind of <laughs> get it just by doing this. So I can't even imagine if I was actually working for a, a blockchain company, it would be crazy. And you you got a bunch of them. I mean, you're you're doing at least like three companies right now. And um... right now, focusing on three, it's a great getting pretty much of, of my uh, free time, spare time, and the rest of it is uh, of course going to to the Futan Blockchain Association as well. We're uh, organizing several neo nights, and, uh, different uh, educational um, events, and meetups, and there's a, a lot going on. But I'm really glad to be a part of, of this uh, blockchain association. And it really, you just get to know so many people and uh, so many uh, different profiles in, into blockchain. It's just a, such a nice networking and uh, learning re learning effect with um, with this association. I think I think it's just just a great uh, point. But it really gets a lot of time from from my side, just oh, getting all these events yeah. ready and uh, and so on from 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 the first draft till the event night it's, it's a little tough but uh we're we're a nice team so, yeah yeah all right and uh are we'll you gonna, get it done are you pl are you planning on any any traveling here anytime soon um initially i was planning to to fly back to europe but um after all this uh 
blockchain and this and that. And as I told, I'm not really suffering that much here in Shanghai. If I'm going to travel around, I think I'm just going to discover a little bit uh, of uh, Southeast Asia, just yeah. Philippines, maybe Indonesia, some Singapore with, with file proof. And yeah, yeah. thanks wow. to thanks to Skype and, and other uh, platforms it's pretty easy to get in touch with the family so i might might be able to extend it a little more <laughs> yeah all right man well awesome yeah. well I'm, I'm glad i got to talk with you and and uh you know find out what's what's going on over there and especially in, in you know in your, your part of the world and and uh see that you're you're being part of uh education for for people yeah. the, the yeah. food and blockchain association uh, that's primarily students and um uh, introducing now them. on my on my own might be organizing some some event for for a pretty nice project which is uh, called uh, DAO Stack. I don't know if you've heard about uh, some uh, decentralized government governance uh, projects coming on 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 the crypto sphere. Um, not really. I mean, um, where where do <laughs> I find that? So just imagine uh, to be able to build up even a whole government into a decentralized way. Yeah. Thanks to thanks to a uh, platform which enables you to have this decentralized governance at a scale. For example, there there were several projects already. Like EOS is one of the one of the top um, top cr cryptocurrencies right now, and it's a project uh, based on decentralized uh, organization. We had uh, the DAO as well, uh, which got hacked a couple of years ago. Uh, it's actually the one the project that. Um, Created or generated uh, caused uh, the 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 hard fork of Ethereum towards uh, Ethereum wow. Classic. <laughs> it was a huge scandal back then, and a couple of more projects like Aragon and so on. Yeah. But this uh, DAOSAC project, I just came across it like one month ago and so or so, and it's, uh, it just captured all my attention. It's just like kind of a WordPress but for DAOs, for decentralized autonomous organizations, and their vision is just like to to enable anyone anyone to roll out a, a DAO with with government uh, governance components at, at a low cost and, and high speed. I think that's just an amazing idea. Like every single project just, just could decentralize it in, into into uh, like the, the governance as, aspect. And every single party related to that could be active into the community. It could yeah. literally be uh, voting on which one is the best path on a secure way and and just you know it's it's really interesting yeah and i think that's that should be the way that uh, all you know obviously most governments should be going is uh, decentralized and uh, more about the people and i mean i'm i'm pretty radical on, on this way you know i'm a millennial me, millennial and thinking uh, pretty pretty radical maybe maybe too too radical sometimes <laughs> uh, you still have some lobbyism pro problems traditional institutions and centralized parties which are going to be fighting for for their stake yeah like banks or financial institutions and even governments are set but still in, in the long term you're you're going to see this for sure well you know uh, well-behaved people seldom seldom make history so um exactly you know, exactly yeah. You gotta, you gotta go out there and you gotta, you gotta shake stuff up, you know, uh, rough it up and and uh, shake it around, and you know, get some of the crap out of there, and and uh, <laughs> you know, I gotta get some new blood into it, and and this, I think this is a great way to do it, the decentralize and then young kids that are seeing a different way to do things, getting some of the old people out of there, and uh, exactly, you know. and blockchain is doing it like with. All the industries we already know. Uh, Bitcoin is decentralizing uh, banking systems, and we have several pr platforms doing it in several other industries. But we still have the lag of these uh, decentralized governance yes. until I just came across this project. Then just take a look on it. I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, well, shoot me the link to that so I can put that up in the show notes here. And, <laughs> totally, and, totally. Uh, ICO coming uh, next month in May. So really, I'll rather be quick. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to go out of China to, this is to no get financial into advisor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, this is awesome, man. Well, you know, keep keep uh, you know keep in touch with me, and and uh, you know, let's keep you know find out what's going on with you and and uh, news news from China that they don't let out. Maybe you can be our our secret uh, secret Chinese uh, affiliate. <laughs> 
don't get this into too, in too many uh, Chinese <laughs> platforms and uh, media platforms, please. I, I maybe have been talking too much. <laughs> but anyway, it was really a pleasure yes. having you invited me to, to your podcast. It was Absolutely. really a pleasure to be talking to Crypto the Wonder Dog. Yeah. And as said, uh, any any time you came across, uh, you come uh, come around to, to China, just let me know. I will. Get some some people to meet here in Shanghai. That would be great, man. I'd love to. Right on. Great. All right, Alvaro. You have great. a great day out there, or the evening, or night, whatever time it is out there. But uh, great talking with you, and I will hopefully hear from you soon, buddy. Thank you very much, man. Keep in touch. You too. All right, bye.